going on, y'all? Welcome to the edition of Writer's Block. Writer's Block is about me and my writing, my books, uh, where I'm going to be reading excerpts from my books for the next eight weeks. This week, we're going to be starting with my book here titled All Skin Folk and Kin Folk. Uh, it's more so like a self-help book just to get us to understand each other because change starts with you, the individual. You can't ask other people for change if we're not willing to change ourselves. So this book is more so a self-help book and kind of helps with some of the mindset of us as people. This, this book isn't a race-based book. It isn't about just black, white. It's, you know, it's about everybody. You know what I mean? Because like I said, change starts with each one of us. And uh, each of my books, you'll be able to find them on Amazon.com and where all books are sold. Uh, you can just Google my titles. You know, each week you can Google my titles. I'll drop my titles at the end of uh, each, each video segment here and you can look them up. Alright, so uh, we're going to get started here. We'll be reading this first excerpt. It speaks about the mental breakdown. In my observation in my life, traumas are a high cause of mental health. Let's first identify the nouns. People, family, friends, associates, trainers, educators, and public servants. What these people say or do can have a major impact on your on you forever, positively or negatively. Places, home, school, playground, parks, gyms, pools, places of business, beaches and houses of worship and recreation centers. Things, drugs, alcohol, tobacco, vehicles, money, life, love and death. Drug addiction, alcohol abuse, and tobacco alter your state of mind, especially when one longs for it. Tobacco will definitely produce mood swings, cause nicotine fits or trips, as well as we call it, and many of us know with diverse types of drugs come several types of behavior. Alcohol abuse can produce many types of people, happy, sad, mad, and angry. While on your quest to greatness, life will be a roller coaster. Mentally prepare yourself and put your emotions in your back pocket. To buckle up for one hell of a ride. So that's the mental breakdown I give. And uh, no, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm just speaking just from life experiences. You know, uh, many places that we may go uh, starting from, from youth. Things can happen in these, these certain places. And it can alter the way we look at these places, the people in these places, and the things that are actually going on. So, you know, I mean, we're moving on. So now I'm going to read an excerpt here. It's called When Grandma Died, Family Died. Some call her Big Mama, Granny Mo, Grand Grand, Mima, Mama, Mama, Nana. Whenever you hear mention of Granny, no matter the age of the person, a huge smile will follow. My Nana turned 96 years old, January 2024. As smart as a whip, I'm telling you, slicker than a can of oil, you baby. Often, Nana will turn her pain into jokes, forcing you to laugh so you won't feel down or sorry for her. Nana will rather lift you in her pain than you waddle in hers. Now, that, now that's my pop's mom. The, neighbor also, the neighbors also call her Nana. Now, my mother's mom, she was a beautiful soul. Church gone. Didn't play, didn't play too many games. 
you stayed Saturday night at grandma's house, Sunday morning you was going to church. Grandma opened the church <clears throat> and she taught the, the uh, youth Sunday school. At, at 8 a.m., Grandma loved the Lord. If it wasn't the Lord, it wasn't right. She loved her family and prayed hard for each and every one of, one of us. I know firsthand sitting next to Grandma on those Sundays, between me nodding off so hard oftentimes on Granny's shoulder or on Mother Ferris's shoulder. Saliva from, from the famous butterscotch candy, a delicatessen, dripping from my mouth. Don't get me started with Saturday morning prayer and Bible study over the phone. I mean, they be on the phone for hours. I mean, on a Saturday, you were easily awakened with a thunderous type prayer going on. And if you know, you know. Grandmothers are the rock of the family. Let me make it clear. We are talking about the old school grannies. The grannies from back in the day, no matter if you were a girl or boy, if she caught you doing wrong, will beat your hind part. House smelled like spick and span, a meal or a snack always ready for you. She would send you to pick up the switch or belt if you act up. Granny beat everybody in sight, just for one of you getting out of hand. <laughs> Afterward, Granny would tell you it was for your own good. Your ass would still be on fire. You believed Granny and knew she loved you to the end of the world. Granny would then give you some warm cookies or give you those famous sugar cookies that used to come in the red or tin can. <laughs> she only bought out during the holidays. She would sit those cookies on a napkin with some warm milk, offer you the table, and she would walk off humming her favorite church hymn. It was a strange type focus, strange type confused feeling. Because you felt violated after that ass book. However, eating those cookies and warm milk made you sympathize with why Granny beat your ass. The old school grannies invented the term tough love. Anyhow, those who celebrate Thanksgiving know that's one holiday that many of our grannies took pride in. The time she knew all her children, grands and great grands, her sisters and brothers, and if any of us were so lucky to have great-grandma around, Granny knew this was the day that all her family would be in attendance. That's if no one were locked up or deployed in the armed service. Your ass better be, better be there, even if you could only stop it for a brief period. For Granny slaved over that food and made everyone's favorite dish. Granny loved to see not only her family, but people smiling, full and happy. Granny is all about family. Granny don't play that. Family brickling. Well, at least not in the public. No errant family business out for the world. Handle it eternally or did you? Because many of our parents and their siblings had deep issues with each other, rooted from their childhood. Many times those issues weren't so deep it led to cousins, the next generation, not getting along or not having a relationship. Granny knew of this, but never wanted to address it. Whenever topic is brought up, Granny would say, y'all just leave it be. This would cause the pot to boil over. Some of our aunts, uncles, or and or mother, or father, feeling like their own siblings feel like their own mother or granny didn't love them equally. Siblings feeling granny didn't care as much for them or thought granny had favorites. Being young, you hear these conversations about granny might have treated your dad or your mom a certain way, but you love granny. You don't want to believe. You don't want to feel the same as your parents having this bottled up hurt and pain for years. 
besides, this was before your existence. The vibe is of a horror story, how Granny used to whoop their ass. Dad or mom, auntie or uncle resemble grandpa. Let's say the abuse granddad might have put on Granny, you know that saying, hurt people hurt people. I'm just justifying, I'm not justifying abuse at all and never will. With all this bottle of pain, your parents would then respond, I don't want you to love your granny any less. You like, what? Like, how are you my parent? And you just laid some heavy shit on me. I don't understand. Besides, I'm only nine years old. I'm not understanding because I don't know this side of granny you speak of. I'm feeling like granny is a monster how she made me as my parents feel. Now you're conflicted about the story. That granny worked a lot, which put the responsibility on the older siblings to raise the younger siblings. This caused the siblings to form resentment and hatred toward the younger siblings. It wasn't younger siblings' fault. And older siblings had this hatred towards granny. Because of this, Granny was just trying to do the best she could with 12 kids. Granddad left raising another family. This type of situation caused more anger and resentment within family. Bottled up feelings, spirits circulating. Now you have around 98% of the immediate family who will show up when Granny called. And the 2% who is missing and always seems to take issues with everyone else who may have been in attendance. This is why I say, when our grannies die, the family dies. Completely. The family was dying all along, but when many of our grannies left, the spirit of the family followed. There's no more meetings at granny house for Friday night fish fry, family game or movie night, or just kick back telling old family stories. Like that time, Granny was dropped off after dinner with a few mothers from church. Uncle Rainbow, butt ass naked, banging on the screen door of the house. Uncle Rainbow didn't hear when Granny pulled up. Uncle Rainbow heard the woman yelling from inside, inside the car as Granny was getting out. Jesus, Jesus. Uncle Rainbow quickly turned around, dick swing, shocked. Shock expression on his face. He thought Granny was in the house sleep. Uncle Rimbo yelled, Mama, thank God. Granny then yells, Rimbo, get your naked ass in the house. Granny embarrassed, she turns to apologize to her sisters in Christ. They did <laughs> they respond, it's alright, Sister Claudia. <laughs> Come to find out, Uncle Rimbo was messing with this woman a few blocks away. Who was married. Her husband was a truck driver. He came home, Uncle Wimbo jumped out window, ass naked. After the husband kicked bedroom door, he whooped on Uncle Wimbo, sweaty, naked ass, for a minute. He pulled a patch of Uncle Wimbo jerry curl from the scalp. <laughs> At that moment, the woman jumped in between, allowing for Uncle Wimbo to escape out the window. This story never gets old. We laugh until our stomachs hurt. Old Uncle Wimbo. As the wind blows, time change, granny's age, our grannies are super women to us. Could never fathom I would miss Sunday dinners at granny's house. No family is perfect. When family come together and break bread is a heartwarming moment and scene. The women in the kitchen gossiping and the men watching Sunday football or basketball in their room, all the guys laughing at that one lying ass cousin who keep talking during the game. No more laughing at Uncle Rambo sitting, smacking in front of the TV, and Uncle Rock cussing him to the floor. It's a different, it's a different gathering. All split into groups. Certain family members don't mess with other family members. What, a, what used to make the heart smile makes the heart sad. You know, it's always one family member who can still go around everyone freely. Things are different. 
awkward to say the least. Sad. Why can't things be the same? Blaming yourself. But this has been deep rooted before you were born. No fixing. Granny leaving the family should have brought the family closer. This isn't how Granny wanted the family to be. Why didn't Granny stop this known behavior? Did she not know it could get this like this? Did she think it would fix itself? Didn't she know she wouldn't always be here? Was she only content because she knew the family respected her wishes on earth and cared less in her death? You miss how things used to be or do or did because it was fucked up then and deep rooted. Did any of them genuinely love Granny, their mother? Do they even care what she meant to her grandchildren? Do they not see what they've done to the generation after? Now we have a grandma, now we have grandmothers wanting to be called grandma, grand, grandmothers. What is that? Running from reality, wanting to be other than who they're supposed to be. Makes you wonder if that's why they're a grandmother in the first place. On second thought, it seems true. The neglect was passed down. Some didn't want to be it. Then and surely not to the second power now. They think they think being called grandma means they're old. They're just women afraid of their reality, fear of getting old. If you ask me, it seems they're shame. The title grandmother doesn't sound or mean old. It means you're the grand of the mothers. Sitting with knowledge, you want to think young and age, but move with wisdom and grace. Many prefer glam over grand. For them, that's a better feeling and a better place. There is no competition when you're grand. What's glam when a child is seeking knowledge? What's glam when you see that a child is seeking a touch that only grand of mothers can provide? Don't add to the trauma. Provide the security for our youth. If you from Generation X, you know the true brand of mothers. So that's the excerpt. When Granny died, our family died. Uh, once again, that's the excerpt from All Skin Folk Ain't Kin Folk. You can find this book along with all my other books. Amazon.com. Whatever books are sold online, just Google the title. Like I said at the end, I will have all my titles at the end of every one of these these videos, and uh, you can just look them up. Until next time, this is Writer's Block.